Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can read in an experimental uh, image into M-calibration and convert the data in this image, the stress strain data or whatever data it is, into a format that you can then use for calculations of stress and strain and calibration or whatever you want to do. Basically, convert an image to the data that comes from the graph in that image. So uh, to do that, I will uh, just use the data that I have on the screen here. I'm going to first um, convert this image to a file that I can open up. So I'm just going to save it as a square image. I'm going to save it to file. I'm going to save it right here. And then let's take a look at the image we just created. Here it is. So we just created a screenshot of the stress strain curve. This is the fig figure that I want to read in now. So it happened to be true stress and true strain, but it doesn't really matter. We can uh, convert that later. So I'm going to go back to M calibration. And then I'm going to go to the extract tab. This is the new feature in M calibration. I'm going to load in my image by clicking on load image. And here it is. I say open. You see that the resolution of this image is so large that it doesn't even fit in the screen here. So I'm going to zoom to fit. That gives us a, a view of what's going on here. One feature here is that we can zoom in and out of this image by using the uh, control key and the mouse wheel. So you can zoom in. That zooms in to where whatever the mouse is. And that's a quick way to get it around the image that we want to work with. The first thing is to set the x1 and x2 values, the lower and up value, upper values on the x-axis. So click set x point. I zoom in here. It a, draws a blue point there. I'm going to click on set x2. I zoom out and I zoom in over here. I want my x2 point to be here. See, there's a blue line defining the x-axis now. Set point y1. It should be down here somewhere. I'm clicking a similar point to there. I'm going to set point y2. And I'll zoom in here. Now we have defined the endpoints on the two axes. We need to set the values now. So x1 happened to be a value of minus 0.8. Uh, x2 is, is 0 in this case, and y1 goes to, in this case as well, minus 0 0.8, and the end point is 0. When I set these points here, we can now zoom to fit. The mouse, when I move the mouse on the image, in the lower left corner, it shows you the value. So we can pick a point to check it. So if I put my mouse around here, the x value should be minus 0 0.7, the y value should be minus 0.2. So that's how you can check that it works. So now the next thing is to select a number of control points along this red line that we will use for our um, data extraction. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to have one point at the origin. That's my first point. Then I'm going to click on a few points along this curve. I can zoom in and out as I want. You can see that it starts to draw a line along these points. I'm just going to click along the line here. And uh, I don't have to have a, a tremendous large number of points either. I will then later on, I'll show you how, convert its, these points using a, a cubic spline to the real data. So it's going to select uh, some points that seem reasonable here. I'm going to take a few more points at the high curvature era, area there. I'm going to pick a few points here, I'll zoom out a little bit, I'll zoom in here. I don't really care how many points. Uh, I just want to do this pretty quickly here. Okay, so we're almost done. I'm going to pick a point here, here. I'll pick the last point right there. So that, these are the points that I want to convert and save now. I can save these points to a file by exporting it to a data file, but I can also convert it to the data tab. So I'm just going to click on this one. It takes the data that we extracted and moved it over to this portion of M um, calibration. It added a fake time to it. So we need to actually come up with a real time if we want to use this for calibration purposes. So I'm switching over to the original image here to find out what was the strain rate of this particular test. So I'm going to uh, plot on the y-axis here strain rate. So if, let's find strain rate here. Here it is, true strain rate. Strain rate is uh, 0 0.01. So I can go back to the data tab. This is the data that we read in. I'm going to change the strain rate of this by right-clicking on the time column, make strain rate constant. I select all of that 0 0.01. That will change the time 
column to match the actual experimental data. This is now man labeled as engineering strain, but that wasn't what it was. It was actually true strain. So I'm going to just change the label there. Set column name, true strain. Now this one, I set column name, true stress. I can plot now true strain and true stress here. But you see, there's a very coarse number of data points. These are the points that I selected. I'm going to upsample this now, and I'm going to do it in two steps. I'm going to first change the number of data points. I'm going to say use a cubic spline to between between these selected points. Let's pick say 200 points, and that makes this into a smooth curve. In fact, we could have a little bit more than 200 points. They look a little sharp at the end there. So I'm going to undo this, change the number of data points as to 500 data points. We do cubic spline, and here it is. This looks a little better. The next thing I'll do is, is sometimes necessary, but not always. I'm going to resample these points so they're evenly spaced out. So I'm going to do that by switching to linear interpolate. I'm going to resample them, say 500. It just resampled them so they are evenly spaced out along here. Now I can re read this data into uh, the Calibrate tab by clicking on Create Load Case. That brings it over to a load case definition. It's true stress, true strain. That looks good. And here it is. This is the uh, strain rate plot, but we can plot through stress, through strain. So here it is. The, the load case here we can call um, uh, from image. So the green line is from that image that we did digitalized, and then the red line is from the original. So you see that the, the two are very similar, and uh, they are very uh, useful from that perspective. You can see that's a little bit uh, of a difference in the sharp corner here. But besides that, it looks really good. We could have used even more points at the turnaround point here to, to capture that even better. But that's how you would use this feature. Typically, of course, you wouldn't uh, save the image and then read it in again. You would grab an image from the literature that you're interested in, someone else's data, some, something you want to work with. And then you can read it in very quickly and into M calibration. And this is then available for any material calibration that you're interested in. If you have any questions, ask them below.